Hello everyone. So tonight Gillian and I are going to share the candle. Um, we decided on, on this a long time ago when Chris first mentioned that he was going to have uh, this lovely event each evening um, during Advent. And Gillian and I were, were chatting about our favourite Christmas carol and we both chose the same one and yep, yeah, the same line as well. So we thought it would be good to do this together. Gillian and I are both primary school teachers and uh, normally at this time of year we are feeling such a uh, sigh of relief. Um, the P3 nativity is over, the string group have played, um, we have survived it all and uh, we are ready now to just settle into Christmas at home. But of course this year has been just so different. We are normally surrounded by Christmas music every year. We have sung every carol I think there is to sing or play. We have tried every song that a P6 or 7 could possibly manage. But uh, it has been a quieter Christmas in school this year and it's still been a very special time, perhaps more so in many ways, but uh, we definitely have missed the buzz and the excitement of, of the plays and the carol services. But Gillian and I, uh, when we were chatting about our favourite carol, it's actually not a traditional one, it's, uh, but it's something I think that has become quite special to Beaver. As long as I can remember, we have heard this song most Christmases by our choir and uh, sometimes John and Sandy lead it at the beginning with just the guitar and it's called Thorns in the Straw by Graham Kendrick. And it starts with the line, since the day the angel came, it seemed like everything had changed. And the song then continues with the words, the only certain thing was the child that moved within. But this song just literally touches me each year and grounds me with its message. It's such a quiet, thoughtful uh, song, but so real and so raw. It talks about the whole journey of Jesus, not just the baby who was born, not just that God entered the world as a baby, but that he was going to journey on all the way to the cross. And uh, Mary herself, as the song says, was going to be a witness of, of all of these events from the beginning through to the end. And the words so bitter yet so sweet are repeated time and time again in the song. Again, these words are, are just especially meaningful for us. Uh, it makes me think back to Johnny's candle earlier in the year when he spoke to us and reminded us of the, uh, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, uh, just as he reflected on lockdown. And in Mary's experience, as she looked at this little baby and you know that the song talks of, did she see there a thorn? in the straw? Um, did she smell myrrh? Did she hear angels sing? This this joyous, joyous night, uh, which eventually would lead to her son being killed on the cross, but ultimately rising again and being the saviour of the world. And so for me, Thorns in the Straw uh, just quiets the Christmas busyness. It keeps me pointed from Christmas in the direction of Easter. And I'm just so thankful for the baby in Bethlehem who was born among us and who died and who rose again and who gives us eternal hope. And uh, I'm going to pass now to Gillian who's going to share some more of our thoughts. When I hear this line as it's sung, it makes me think about how do I cope with uncertainty. And during the last lot of years, I have faced quite a bit of uncertainty. I am sure that Mary experienced great anxiety in her heart and wished for more details of the outcome. What would this mean for her and for Joseph? How would she cope? What would this child mean? Perhaps today more than ever, we are facing uncertainty and maybe if you're like me, this can be gripping and unsettling. We're all about future plans, so trying to remain calm in the present can be a struggle. One moment, one step, one day at a time. Like Mary, can we trust in God's truth and stand firm in his certainty? 
Mary knew that her human ability was not enough, but that God was. The last um, part of the song that we both really like is the line, on the road that would not end. We're quite sure that Mary thought she may never make it. That dusty road must have stretched out ahead of her for miles and miles with no end in sight. And we can all perhaps relate to that, trying to navigate along a road that seems to be never ending, feeling like we're down to our last prayer and stumbling in the dark. But God has gone before us and knows where this road will lead. Can we, like Mary, trust God even when the darkness creeps in? Can we still trust that there's more written, that God is still in control? That first Christmas story is gentle and understated. A humble baby born in a stable, the hope of the world. Think on the wonder of it all. In the quiet and darkness of the night, Jesus came for love and because of love to be with us, to fulfill promises. He has a plan and purpose. Every tear, every uncertainty, and every winding road, every moment of waiting and hurting will someday be made new. May we take time this Christmas to really see with our hearts what that little baby in the straw has done. Lord, we thank you tonight that you are our certain thing. And so we look to you for light in a dark world, for hope in a fearful heart, and for peace in every troubled soul. God.